healthcare sector. And right now, if uh, anybody were to ask me what are my two areas of work, it uh, is basically the two areas of work that are covered by the upcoming uh, landform. So essentially that's forestry and that's rye. And, and in the context of what, where I work right now, so very much Lao and the regional countries of the lower Mekong as well, um, what we're talking about there is really about the interface between um, forestry where people are basically the only um, uh, real widespread effort to manage forests, as well as people coming in from the investment side. Um, I am working in this area for, for some time, and um, what's really interesting for me is to look at that, that interface between the two groups, investors and forest. I would like to take the example of what I'm uh, currently interacting with in Laos, and uh, the landscape is such that there is a big investment happening. Um, there are a number of big investments happening in the region, but I think one is very outstanding, and that is the Belt and Road Initiative, BRI, from China, and specifically in the context of Lao, they are building a railway. So this is the first railway that Lao has. This is the railway that has opened um, Lao's many new tunnels and, um, and, and, and uh, new, new a new way mode of transportation. And alongside that railway, there's also a new highway being built under the BRI initiative by China. What does that mean? That's just the background, but what does that mean? It means that there will be um, a host of new investments coming in to capitalize on that transportation and infrastructure. And who is right there connecting, uh, being connected by this uh, Belt and Road Railway in North is China. This railway will connect um, China with the capital of Laos, Chen. And when these investments come in, um, what that means is that um, obviously investments, investors will be looking for um, areas to invest. And in Laos, that's predominantly about land-based investments. Um, and that's agriculture or forestry. They are coming in, the investors are coming in, looking for good opportunities. Um, and that's, uh, and that's um, first and foremost, a pretty positive scenario for the country as well as for um, its people, for the communities and farmers. It provides an opportunity for income generation and a market to sell their products towards. So it's uh, first and foremost, a positive um, development. Obviously there's areas that we need to be careful of and that a lot of that uh, is to do with how land is accessed and uh, be it in the form of, of concessions or land leases or contract farming or the farmers doing their own farming and selling directly to traders. So there's various forms of how land uh, can be accessed and how farmers, um, community can be engaged in the investment scenario. Um, and obviously the legal framework is one way that can manage such conflicts um, to some extent. It's also about the capacity of the central government to work with local governments to uh, ensure that certain legal frameworks are um, implemented effectively. It's also the role of um, other stakeholders, including civil society, to help communities in negotiating contracts to understand and to help uh, to position themselves better. Um, and all of these actors are going to be present in the land forum. And I think it would be an interesting opportunity to discuss you know, uh, around this context of investors coming in, pulled by a big um, a, a infrastructure project happening in Laos. And I'm quite certain that similar discussions uh, are happening also in all of the little Mekong countries where we can really learn from each other and exchange. So really looking forward to some productive, constructive, and uh, useful, insightful discussions at the land forum. See you then. <laughs>